and welcome to another episode of Tiny Tips for Power BI. I'm Belinda Allen and I'm going to be your guide for the next few minutes. Recently, my coworker asked me about how do I handle when I'm accessing a local data source and I move the data source. One of the things that I do every time I build something using local data, I use a parameter. So let's go ahead and open the query editor and we will set up a parameter and I'll show you how I use it. Now this is just my tiny little fake data set. Uh, it has doctors in it. I use names from Saturday Night Live. I used hospitals from also TV shows and I've got a variety of data. I also have balances for them and I have credit limits for them. So I have a little star schema thing going here. I don't have a date table yet because there is no data in here that requires a date table. The only numbers I have are what is the credit limit right now and what is the balance right now. So let me show you how I access this. If I come up to source, you could see I have a path. I'm technically looking at a file on OneDrive, but I see the local path that's listed right here. So what I do is I will come in and add a parameter. So on the home menu, there is a parameter section. And since I don't have any parameters, I can just click on the icon or I can click on the drop down and choose new parameter. Either way, the exact same window is going to open. And if you just click on it, you might need to click on new to get this new parameter here. So I'm going to call this Excel file path. And you could put a description if you want to. Uh, maybe this is where the doctor files are located. And whoops. All right, and misspelled doctor too. No surprise there. Now, one of the things that you want to do when you set up a parameter is definitely set the data type for that parameter. Some people have discovered there are a lot of times you could just avoid putting that in but at some point you're bound to run into a problem. Now what I'm going to do is come in and here's my doctor's file. So I'm going to copy that and paste that in. Now one of the things you noticed is there's no ending backslash. And if somebody were to come in to Windows Explorer and just copy the link like I did, they're not going to put that in. So I want to help them out by not making them put it in. We might even want to come in and add, for example, and then paste that in. And now we'll click OK. Now we have this parameter. And you notice it's italicized because it does not appear on the report. I'm going to go ahead, just right mouse click, and move it to a group, a new group that I call parameters. I like to keep all my parameters together. So that is how we add the parameter. Now let's go back to our data. And I'm going to come into source over here and click on the cog or the settings gear. And then here is where I have all of my data. So you can see I have the same path, a backslash, and then doctors, and then dot XLSX. Now I'm going to change this to advanced so I could add some additional um, parts. And I'm going to add two parts. In the first part, I'm going to grab the name of the file and place it down here. Now I might even want to add an additional, a fourth one, and put the dot .xls in the fourth part. And then I'll put the backslash here. That way if I even change the name of the fit or the table, it, it'll still be easy for me to make a change. And then up here we have the path. I'm going to change this from one where I enter it to a parameter. And I only have one parameter, the Excel file path. So it will be displayed with the path and the parameter backslash doctors.xlsx. And I'll click on OK. And I'm going to repeat these steps for my balances. And then I'll click OK. So now my path, even if I look up in the data source, my path is using that parameter. So let's go ahead and click on close and apply. And then I'm going to go ahead and just save my file. Now back in here, I'm actually actively using this file. I'm going to right mouse click and copy it 
and paste it into my tiny tips folder. So one of the things I might even want to do, why not? Let's just delete that right there. So now it doesn't exist in the existing path, but it exists in the tiny tips folder. So if I were to try to refresh, I'm going to get an error message because it can't find the file. But all I have to do is change my parameter. I'll click on the drop down for data transformation and I'll choose edit parameters because I'm actually editing the transforming the parameter here. So now if I were to come in to tiny tips and copy that and paste that in and click OK. I need to apply the changes because I didn't go into query editor and now my data works. So if I try to refresh, it's going to refresh for me. And this is one way that I use parameters. Hope this helps.